Hey, 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 how's everyone? Thank you for being here. Another episode. I think we're on like the 37 episode or something like that already. Uh, but I'm so happy here because we have Joe and Andrew. You know, they, they both have something in common. You know, that, that's why we brought them here. <laughs> they are New of, things, right? Of yeah. And they know each other for a long time, right? Well, tell, tell me a little bit, Joe, how do you met uh, Andrew? Or that you know, Down, uh, back when I lived in Wisconsin, uh, yeah. I worked at Epic, even a healthcare software company, and then went to Click. And I started traveling to Florida and met Andrew through the health system he worked at down here, awesome. and uh, just stayed connected. And we did a hackathon in DC, late night stuff. Mm -hmm. I forgot about that until you reminded me of that a while back. I think I like <laughs> erased that from my memory, but uh, wow. 24 hours in what building was it? We were. Health and Human Services. Yeah, HHS yeah. and just like on hardwood tile or hard tile floors with like folding tables. Folding tables, yeah. Like, oh, you guys must be hungry. Let's like order in pizza for yeah. hundreds of people that are trying to do a hackathon. Yeah, it was great. Awesome. That, that pizza came so late. That was like yeah. maybe three hours after. And they were like, Whew, you guys need uh, extension cords too, right? Or, yeah. I, I know laptop power is, is pretty good whenever you're running few million records right right yeah <laughs> they were not prepared for us but they're like yeah. it was so good we should do this again like, well here's but all I, the things you need to have ready i do remember staying on on topic here that they did have some coffee there for us so they were like hey we know what really makes the world go round right that's <laughs> true that's true that's what we're here today so we're here today you know we we have data visualizations related to coffee I have here some of my, you know, coffee cups. I told everyone I was going to bring some nice coffee cups. Look at the Boa <laughs> Fett coffee cup right here. Um, and we all brew some coffee. And just tell me, um, what is your favorite coffee, Joe? What, what, what do you usually drink, like, most days? What's your favorite one? I try to order from uh, this this uh, roaster in Madison where I used to live for, mm -hmm. like, 10, 12 years. Mm -hmm. And I'll get coffee ordered to us in Florida now from them. And so I'm grinding the beans every day. They have a couple different varieties. They always have a funny logo or like a mm -hmm. saying on it. Uh, oh, it's nice. called Just Coffee. And uh, just grind that up. And so every morning, just try to make a fresh cup of coffee or an espresso. And um, nothing uh, nothing too extraordinary. If I'm okay. out, it's usually a latte, though, that I'm trying to get. Yeah, that's what I do, latte to me. Too. Yeah. What, what about you, uh, Andrew? What, what is your favorite? Which one is your, the one that you use oh, um, almost every day? The most common. Yeah, so the type of coffee bean is actually from New Mexico. Mm -hmm. It's a pinon coffee. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like a, a real mellow pine nut coffee. And it's like, mm -hmm. hmm, that, that sounds a little weird, right? Mm -hmm. But what I like about it is it has a very um, light, earthy flavor to it. Mm -hmm. And then it blends really well with everything. So what I started doing mm -hmm. like the last probably two, three months is uh, a dirty chai. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I do a dirty chai at home. No, that doesn't mean it has Baileys or anything in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally just um, chai tea um, mm -hmm. with a with a little bit of the coffee or espresso in it. Great. So mm -hmm. it, it's amazing. That sounds great. That sounds great. I usually drink... Uh, Lattes or expressos, uh, Cuban coffee or Colombian, or especially from my parents' uh, town in Puerto Rico, they send me the coffee. Oh, so it's wow. really good coffee in Puerto Rico, but they don't export the coffee, you know, because they don't have that much coffee that they can make, but it's really good coffee. Yeah, yeah that's why they end up doing a little cortado, right? With a yeah, casico. like little this, then... this right here. <laughs> it's like exactly. That. I brought my yeah. my little espresso cup as yeah. well. I'm not going to dare drink the rest of it. It's too late in the day for me. Exactly. But like, I'll, I'll go make one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's great. That's great. So we, we have some nice, cool visualizations. I mean, let me tell you, when we're talking before the show, there's so many out there. I mean, this is a great, great data for, you know, learn, visualize. It doesn't matter what tool you're using. Uh, just, I mean, use this data. It's really good. It's easy to find. It's easy to find examples out there for uh, data related to coffee. So, Joe, show me some of the ones that you. Show. Joe has so many, and he's going to show us some great ones that he have today. Yeah, yeah. I um, I like to troll the uh, well, not not in a bad way, but check yeah. out all of the stuff on the Data Is Beautiful uh, subreddit. Yeah. Usually, mm -hmm. have good stuff, and um, I mean, you just type in coffee, and you're going to get pages after pages exactly so i grabbed some of the ones that weren't just 
really bad visualization stuff that's mm -hmm. very easy to see that mm -hmm. um and i grabbed a couple i i like the data science one so anything like mm -hmm. this the, is going to be fun Excellent. um and so there's the article behind it so what plant milk is the most sustainable mm -hmm. um and I remember hearing about this and then I worry about it because I don't know about you guys, but the thing that I add the most is almond milk. And yeah. I heard how bad it can be on the environment, but yeah. it's good that it's better than cow's milk. At least I'm feeling a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, have you guys, do you have a preferred milk if you're going to do like a latte or something? Oats. Mm. Oats? Switch yeah. to oat, yeah. It's creamy, right? It's, it's very good. creamy. Um, I mm. actually have, you'll like this, Joe, if you've never mm. checked it out, it's called an almond cow. So mm. literally, I actually make my own milk. Oh, so yeah. what you do going. is um, you can do the almonds, you can do rice. Um, mm -hmm. I've never tried soy, but cashew, like we, my mom, she did oh, uh, walnut milk the other day. So like literally you can milk almost anything, but uh -huh. all you do is you kind of soak the nuts and then go from there. And I mean, as we kind of talk about this, there's all kinds of environmental factors. Like um, when I'm looking at this, I'm thinking about the bees with all the almonds. Like 80% of our almond production in the world is actually in California. Right. And literally even here in Florida, they ship bees all the way to California. That way they can pollinate all the almond trees I and then they bring that. them back here. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's crazy. So you've got all these factors, which I think are incredible and people understanding these it, i wish there were just monetary incentives like instead i'm paying an extra dollar for the oat milk <laughs> that's mm -hmm. right you're probably paying that for it's all one the most food. expensive ones isn't it yeah it is and this is i mean this is easy to come by pretty much anywhere now yeah uh, exactly that five mm -hmm. years ago i don't know you weren't seeing much of it now there's mm -hmm. every major brand has like an almond nut milk or something weird yeah. yeah, but yeah. Yeah, oats good. My wife just can't stand it, so that's why we yeah. don't get oat milk. <laughs> Something to it that she doesn't like. Hey, the oat creamer is a little different. Um, mm -hmm. I think you've got to go through a few. Um, I'll have to pull up. Now I'm going to forget what the the brand <laughs> is that we use. Um, it's mm -hmm. it's not Oatly. It's another one. We found an even better one. And yeah, James, that's <laughs> that's spot on. It's not that's milk unless it comes from like an animal. That. Yeah, there's a so James law said, in Wisconsin yeah. going in for that as well that like you pan because dairy milk right in Wisconsin is huge so to call it a milk it's like that comes <laughs> up people are voting on that stuff yeah <laughs> yeah so this is the school James says that you know you cannot call product milk unless it comes from an animal <laughs> so yeah. no that's awesome do you know what the other one I've tried a couple times uh I don't know if you guys think of this could work uh coconut milk so i've tried coconut milk before and yeah. it, it could work in some cases right uh, depends on what you're doing but i was actually it's surprised it's not on here right like mm -hmm. yeah um it, it's not off the charts i can't imagine the things to just grow like crazy but mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. it's competing with coconut water or something yeah. like that yeah so yeah. something that is important here right like going through making it is actually the fat content. And I think that's mm -hmm. part of what makes coffee, right? So I don't know if you remember, I say this back in the day, this will date me a little bit, the bullet coffee, right? With some butter in there. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I think it's just because we had went the opposite direction where you're like, oh, low fat, skim, all these things, right? And then you have to like reintroduce um, the fat content back in there because that's part of what helps the, the flavor profile. And Definitely. I think when we're talking about the flavor profile here, um, we want to make sure that you have a nice, big, juicy flavor profile. So make mm. sure you're using hashtag coffee on today's session. That's right. If you want to be entered to <laughs> win a, a free tumbler here from, from Data Meaning. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, I want to say thank Data Meaning for allowing us to do this show. Uh, as Aaron said, there are 36 show right now. Uh, thank you for Data Meaning for allowing us again. And like you said, like he said, I mean, just hot trash coffee, and we're gonna have that uh, at the end a giveaway. So yeah, so I'm looking at this visualization. What do you think about those circles? How they? I mean, I think it's clever, right? Like how they make those circles. Like the larger the circle, then it means the higher the um, the emissions, right? So yeah, I, I don't like usually it. think to put this like that on a, a combined chart. It's more of an mm -hmm. infographic, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, oh, there's two measures that would be a scatter chart. Mm -hmm. um, but that can be hard to decipher. So this actually makes it pretty compact. 
Mm -hmm. You can look at it in either forms. The con the colors are consistent. I picked mm -hmm. up a lot from you guys over these episodes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, got a good title. You can tell what's going on. I'm like, oh, I, I like the title. Like this one. I like the title. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like the title. It's simple but easy to understand. It had the source. Right. So yeah, it works. Yeah. Joe, when I'm looking at this, I mean, something that I always try and understand from a clarity perspective is like the CO2 emissions, right? So that's becoming important um, from a geography perspective um, because you've got like Russia, right? They're one of the main uh, producers of grains in the world, right? So how are they con getting that information related to CO2 emissions, right? Is that to actually grow the crop or are they also factoring in transportation to you, right? So mm -hmm. like local or... Uh, imports yeah this is uh and I, I saw a couple of those digging in where you could go down the rabbit hole into the production of coffee and what it takes to get that you know drop mm -hmm. into your cup and it's a significant supply chain mm -hmm. lots of travel lots of co2 and so that making your own milk at home or plant-based milk rather is really <laughs> interesting i haven't explored that yet <laughs> <laughs> My wife will say, no more coffee gadgets. I have one here that she got me because oh. I will. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I use it to make this uh, little espresso cup just earlier. Oh, you nice. like nice. put the beans in the top, you've mm -hmm. ground them up, and then you expand this thing. You kind of pump it and turn it over and pump from hot water through it. You make Done. a little thing. Because oh, wow. I used to take, if we go on any extended trip, I have to have a pretty good space to bring my espresso machine. <laughs> Well, that's it's great. Like a, idea. Uh, one foot by one foot by one foot box, and it's about like fifteen pounds. It's not light, but it's like I don't, I don't. What if they don't have good coffee where we're going? I know I can make what I want, so I'll just bring it with me. Mm. I'm like, we're saving money this way, and she's like, it's a lot to lug around. So that's, that's what she got me for that <laughs> a while back. I yeah. wish they had a smaller one, but the guys who work with me know I use, um, I do celery juice every morning. So I literally will lug a juicer around uh, when we travel. <laughs> I'm pretty good with the Marie Kondo style packing things in for the suitcase, yeah. but then yeah. I just reflood that room with the, the juicer in there. You should see the looks at the airport. They're like, um, sir, is what is this exactly that you're trying to take on the plane? Yeah. Yeah. It's really cool. It's great. <laughs> there is someone saying here uh, uh, from Lincoln and a user saying that this chart could be mm -hmm. hard to understand by the Americans because of liters and kilograms. I mean, that's a mm -hmm. very good point. I didn't even notice that, to be honest. Yeah. 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 And it, yes, it doesn't have the it doesn't have an access, but they put the values there. And I, mm -hmm. I worried at first, like, oh, did they are they making it look any bigger? Because sometimes mm -hmm. you can hide where the zero access is, but mm -hmm. it, it looks like it matches up 28, you know, being all yeah. half of the next one and then yeah, a quarter more of the next. So again, they they didn't try to trick you with this at all. Like you can yeah, yeah. sometimes see. I think so. You you have any other? Do you want to? Yeah, start? I had one. Um, and I know you guys have shown like big, tall infographics. Yeah, yeah, um, of course. And so the one that I wanted to focus on from here, yes. I just thought was interesting, and I don't really know uh, how to decipher this one off the no, bat. Right. It took me a while to look through it. So the mm. the most eco friendly brew method. And Andrew, I'm sure you've tried a bunch of these different things too. French, French. Yeah. Um, I like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I like, like, I like what, what, is what the temperature gauge the, is, right? The data. I like the data. Yeah, I like this. Mm -hmm. this is... I like the data. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. So now I feel bad, Joe, because we do use um, reusable, reusable pods. We got the metal one with the paper, but I mm -hmm. actually, we dispose of them in the yard to help with the, the plants. Yeah. A compost, uh, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, I love the cold brew just from an energy perspective. It's really nice. We do a, um, have you ever had a cold brew cola? Cold brew no. cola? No, never. Yes. This is, never. this is next level, man. So <laughs> basically what you do is um, my wife, she loves sodas. And we had gotten um, a while ago one of the, the CO2 machines, right? Um, so she did one of those and what we figured out is you can do the carbonation there. You can get the cola syrup, right? 
uh -huh. and you actually mix that with some of the cold brew and Ooh. then it almost tastes exactly like coke it really yeah yeah mm -hmm. so you got the caffeine in there right you can lower the sugar you can play with the sugar a little bit um but it's a nice cold afternoon pick me up um that ironically doesn't have any milk in it right <laughs> so you like totally change the game up so right. it's really fun yeah hmm. That's been my my go to thing around here when it gets hot in Yama before is like it gets hot here. I love hot coffee, but if I'm out, it's a cold brew with some ice in it, and uh, it's just refreshing. Nice. Yeah, it's 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 great for the afternoon, right? It's like mm -hmm. it's relaxing. You're like chilling by the pool, but you're like, oh, I got to get ready for this evening, right? To go out in the on a Friday night or something. Yeah, the comparison um, is unitless. That's yeah, true. I, yeah. So he says, uh, as long as the units are the same, comparison is unitless. As does anyone really understand the size of any unit of CO two? Um, this is from James. Thank you, James. Um, yeah. Trying to, yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, honestly, I mean, I do like that. You know, they are saying, okay, so cold brew, and I like the, the annotations underneath, right? Mm -hmm. So you can see very low energy and long product life. So and, yeah, go ahead. You know who's actually doing a good job of this from a CO2 output perspective yeah. um, is actually airlines. Mm -hmm. So this will sound kind of interesting, but I don't know if you've seen their programs lately. Um, I saw this, I think, on Southwest website, right? They basically said they're solving that exact problem. How do you um, understand, right, what your trip really means? Hmm. Like how many trees is that, right? What, how much tree does a tree offset in terms of carbon? Because we all understand trees, right? And like, oh, it lives for 20 years. It'll kind of absorb that much carbon into the earth. Okay, so Joe, if you're gonna um, go up, up north, right, and pick up your coffee, like I did this actually with New Mexico, right? We literally went there and I flew Southwest and I came back with 50 pounds of coffee, right? <laughs> Wow. So, then it's like, okay, well, That's how do I? Culture like limit, like uh, the car <laughs> won't let you bring more it's, than it's that. Just the luggage. It's just one. That's of the luggage limit. Yeah. Cool luggage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you thought I was compacting all that, all my suitcase and stuff for uh, to be eco. It's like, yeah, I'm I'm trying to bring that back myself so I can can mm -hmm. be a little greedy there. But then at least now <laughs> yeah. I know what that carbon footprint is, right? Right. And yeah. I think when we talk about that, that's kind of the catch is always providing it in tangible terms so people can understand, right? Um, otherwise, we're, we're never going to do that. So if you were talking about this, it's, okay, how many how many coffee trees would I need to plant to kind of offset uh, my use of disposable pods, right? Hmm. Well, I got a good one because that leads in. I'm glad that question came in too. I can't remember which tab it is, but I Very found good. Yeah, show us. another one. I mean, here's a coffee pod one. We don't want to spend much on it. I just... Oh, I love when good. people make, you know, physical data visualizations. I love that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. There's, there's this order in my world then when I see this stuff. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I will get along with this person. So there is a really cool one, Joe. Uh, I'll send it to you. Uh, I don't have it. I don't, I don't know if Aaron can find it, but uh, I can put it in the chat. But there is one from Chris Tolver where he told his kids on Halloween uh, to put the same thing, but imagine it's with, oh, candy. Yeah, with the candy. Candy. Yeah. And they could, they could see which they have of much candy. <laughs> So they were like bar charts, like here with candy. And then uh, the, the, the days after, he said, okay, look, this is how much they have. Now they can't, you know, the, the, the graph, you could see that it changed and how much candy they ate. <laughs> right. I mean, it's just, it was amazing. It was so, super cool. So it's and this one was amazing. titled like, uh, mm -hmm. um, you know, how many cups of coffee I've had starting mm -hmm. at the pandemic. And this was yeah. like March 23rd of 2020, awesome. right at the beginning. And they're like, is it getting better? Is it getting worse? <laughs> um, I so think part of one. it is even just acknowledging that, right? Like, mm -hmm. I think one of the things when I look at this, I want to see the day of the week because I'm like, hey, what's those the one what coffee cool. days there, right? Like, is mm -hmm. there something different going on? Um, I just had on YouTube, they had a commercial pop up for those mud drinks. Have you seen mm -hmm. those? Mm -hmm. oh, no drinks, no mud drinks. Yeah, I'm you're like, oh, gross. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, basically it's like, uh, chaga and all that other stuff in terms of like mushrooms and things kind of blending that all together oh, and right. it has like some cacao in it. So it's still got the, 
what is that? The mouth, mouth taste, right? We were talking about this or the, yeah, it's the mouth texture, right? Like, what does it feel like in your mouth? There's actually a scale for that. I think it has that same consistency. The flavor is just a little different, but it's more about keeping you mellow and even keel and mm. focused as opposed to uh, like the rise up and, and crash like you kind of have with coffee. Yeah, I I was looking for some charts related to that. I don't know if Aaron or Yama, if you find any either, that was like mm. your energy levels. That's I'm super interested in. That's like, the like, yeah, that yeah. on my own. Mm. And I've never really done that sit down. I mean, have like mm. my watch that kind of tracks if I'm standing up or not. But how's my actual energy level? Is the way to track that stuff <laughs> in a better way? Yeah. <laughs> but the coffee pod one was fun. But the other one that I really like okay. mm -hmm. is this is the size of a coffee pod. Okay. And this is 18 billion single serve coffee pods that Green Mountain Coffee, one of the larger you mm -hmm. know companies that makes these things, sold in just a single year. And this is wow. basically what it would be for a landfill. It's the size of a, you know, multi-block building in New York. This is Jeez. really good. I like yeah, this scale. I really zoom really in and off, good. that's better. So, yeah. you know, something that I've really been paying attention to lately is very nice. How much of the plastic that we use, especially when it's single use, is, is it recyclable? And like, that's something that bothers me right if we know that it's going to be single use how come we can't figure out more creative ways um mm -hmm. to have that be recyclable like we kind of did that with this first pass with a craze around the straws right yeah um but when you look at what the composition is of a landfill right there's actually less straws than possibly even coffee pods here um but i look at that and say hey straws are kind of the easiest example for us to create right because it's such a simple structure but we know it has to stand up to a lot and i think that's the challenge that we should be um questioning where we're buying things from hey are they thinking about those things and are they being environmentally conscious in that way because we already know we're shipping it around the world now the question is what are we doing with it after right so yeah, it's exciting. You literally climb a green mountain as that was exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it probably made a mountain, right? It's kind of sad, right? You don't it's think about it. Green it's mountain so made of used pots. Look at that. That's funny. Yeah. Uh, That's my, awesome. my team member, Jane, I, I don't know if she's uh, on right now, but she worked at Click for a while before she, she joined us. And she's on the CSR team, Corporate Social mm -hmm. Responsibility. Mm -hmm. And at one point, her and the leader, I'm pretty sure it was her, went to the different offices and basically removed the, you know, Keurig machines, the single cup stuff mm -hmm. and put in regular coffee machines and espresso machines because they were sick of you know, the trash cans would just get full with these um, one just use filter things. And they ended up swapping it out for a company that has, I don't even know how many offices have maybe like 30 offices globally. Mm -hmm. Every office had a couple of those machines. And yes. so then, they were like, we're going to make an impact. Just start at each office. And I'm like, that's smart. Yeah. And so, you know, we don't, we haven't used ours. We have those reusable ones when we need it. But um, it's interesting. Like, what can you actually do with these? I don't know if there's much. I, feel mm -hmm. like I, th I thought I oh, saw right. somebody doing like planting seedlings mm -hmm. in each one, having like a carton full of them, like you might do in an egg carton too. But mm -hmm. I think they just get tossed. Yeah. I, I, I think the crazy part is that says 18 billion would it be, right? Like wow. billion. That's like wow. <laughs> I mean, it's very impressive. Like just any and that was, wow. you know, eight, you know, what are we at now? Six, eight years ago. Mm -hmm. I think these things are so much more common now. Exactly. It's just easy to do it. And this is just one brand, one company. One brand, yeah. Mm -hmm. Set. Incredible, incredible. Um, you have any other, or do you want us, or if not, I mean, I can show you. Yeah, if you have some, I had one other one. It's, uh, I would like your guys' feedback on it. Yeah. Um, and that it's pretty basic, but okay. it was the other coffee one. So yeah. I used, uh, mm -hmm. our software to kind of build this one a while back. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I want to try to build a, a, an infographic like thing. Nice. And so I grabbed, um, what I thought were, you know, 10 or so. Uh, you're not counting the bubbles, right? Of the largest coffee chains in America. Okay. And then pick some of the states where our employees are from that I work with. 
oh. and try to arrange this in such a way that you could maybe compare between states like is, is Starbucks bigger in Maryland than it is in North Carolina? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That one was actually pretty flat from the data I found, but it was interesting for like um, maybe Tim Hortons, which is popular near more like the northern states near Canada and stuff. And so it was like, can you see if Tim Hortons is big in North Carolina? Not so much, but it's huge in Michigan. Like we grew up, we had Tim Hortons all around us when I lived there. Um, so I try to have some fun with this, but I I built it as probably as quick as I could go. And I don't know what else to do with it or if it's too confusing. Oh. What do you think? And Andrew, you're, you're muted. There we go. Okay. Um, yeah, I think there's a couple things that I call out here. Um, the title, I think the colors, I'm really like hyper focused on the states, which is good, but I think it'd be important to draw more attention to the title so we understand uh, what we're looking for. These and are then, here, right? Yeah, those as well. I mean, I think maybe if I were to make this viz a little bigger, I'd almost want like some fun facts related to uh, Tim Hortons underneath it, right? So it could be like a little wiki, um, just yeah. because that could literally point to, well, it, it started in Michigan, right? Of course that makes sense. Uh -huh. um, or like the one that I'm actually curious about is like what rules in Florida? Like I almost mm -hmm. feel like it's gonna be a, a Dunkin' Donuts or, mm. I mean, uh, yeah, I think have Dunkin was definitely in there. Panera is everywhere because it's just like it's Panera's. Panera, but Duncan is big. Yeah. Um, and I've definitely seen a lot in Pennsylvania. And I, I think it's also like it's going to be in a lot of places. If I had more data on it, I feel like we could do a nice map, right? Of you could see the West Coast coffee chains like, you know, Seattle and California have Starbucks and yeah. crazy amounts and Duncan more on the East Coast, just like dominating, right? Yeah. Uh, and I'd seen a lot of those and this was just like, maybe just for our like employees and the, the states they're in. So the thing that I, I love about this visual is the fact that you use the little coffee stains. <laughs> yeah. That's like, <laughs> I think that's, that's just... probably how I decided I was gonna build this. I just saw that and I'm like, well, I can, I can make some more of those on a page and then try to arrange something. Yeah. Um, just get, have some fun with it. What about you, Emil? Yeah. Do you like the kind yeah, of like the I small mean, multiples here? You think? Yeah, that's you fun? can see that the Florida, you know, have more bubbles. They're larger for sure, mm. um, really quick. Um, the font is a little smaller than the Maryland one, right? You cannot see. Yeah. The too quick. Yeah. But I have something for you to show you something sure. really funny that I have in one of my visualizations that show you what you guys were talking about. Um, about um, if it, it was a uh, Starbucks or uh, Dunkin', I think I have the solution for you. <laughs> okay. This is very cool. Yeah, that's um, happy to point this out. Maybe I'll get another version for you guys later and we can yeah. kind of rip it apart. I love that. And I'm like, well, I'll put it on the hot seat and see what you guys have to say, knowing I didn't. I didn't really work on this one that much. Hey, I mean, I think that's part of the mm -hmm. the thing about visualization and self-service analytics is it is the iterations that matter, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I think even getting people excited about the data is part of the journey. So like, hey, let's talk about all the coffee data, right? Yeah. And literally like this, you can see what Yamil's doing. Now it sparks this whole conversation, right? Whether it's ecology that's or... Cool. Um, sustainability right um uh, it can it can really change behaviors exactly so this is one of the visualizations that i have to be honest i have too many um too many today <laughs> Ooh, sorry for that hold on so i wanted to do something new and i told uh, joe about this there were so many good visualizations that i thought what if i show joe just the titles and he told me which one grabs his attention real quick so joe, oh. joe i'm gonna go really quick so tell me uh, this one, hold on, this one, this one, one more, one more. Too many. So far, yeah, do you have yeah. anything that grabbed that, your attention? That one that you initially had up had a lot going on, so I'm sure we can spend some more time on that one. But, and that um, one? Okay. Th this Let's one's interesting, that declining coffee exports. That one was cool, right? 
Yeah, it has a, you know, I always like those ones where you're like, okay, I see a lot of different visualizations. There's bar charts. We know that that's probably the mm -hmm. best way to look at this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but when you get to these new visualizations and you're like, hmm, I want to look at this a little bit more and sit down mm -hmm. and try to figure it out. Yeah. Um, this one was interesting. Yeah. So I don't know what it is, but there's always like the violin charts and these always gather my attention. And what's mm -hmm. funny, Yamil, I don't know if you remember this. I was in um, Gainesville and they have that beautiful uh, mm -hmm. color prof uh, color palette for the flavor profile for coffee. Mm -hmm. Do you remember me sh sh taking a picture of that? I'll dig it up and I'll yeah. I'll post the picture here on the chat. But literally, it looks like this. And I was sitting there and I'm like, wow, I've never seen this before. Where is this from? And it was like from the 70s. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah. And I'm like, man, this is so interesting. And it just literally had kind of the pairing concept. So Real awesome. cool. So this is uh, Declining Coffee Experts from India. Well, tell, tell me what you have your attention, Joe, like really quick. It, it's this like uh, somewhat different shape, I think. That's mm -hmm. why I was looking at it. I'm like, okay, where do my eyes go to? I don't usually read the paragraphs first. Mm -hmm. After mm -hmm. I look at it, then I try mm -hmm. to see, did I find the same insights that they had? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm just starting wherever we're describing what's going on. And that is 2020 metric quantity is on the inside band of the, the mm -hmm. rainbow. Then the absolute mm -hmm. uh, delta percentage, the increase or decrease. So if it's gray, it went down. If it's green, it happened to go up. So that's actually very clever because I'm not mm -hmm. sure I could tell which dot mm -hmm. is slightly bigger or slightly smaller. That's that's really unique. I love that. Yeah, this piece, then, right? Right here? Yeah. I, I, I thought the awesome. same thing. I never thought, well, that's a good idea to to make the difference increase. So right here, the Benin increase, Libya, right? Mali, and Switzerland that's right there. And this one just slightly. UAE just went up slightly. And then the outer band, like how much quantity was, you know, exported um, as well. So you can see the big players like Italy, right? Has a huge bubble uh, in that orangey green. Russia. And Russia right there. Yeah. Right uh, there. Went down quite a bit, it looks like. So mm -hmm. that inner dot's telling you how much it decreased. That's very slight. good. Yeah. Me too. I, li I, li I think it's interesting. This is the data source is Coffee Board of India. That's the data source. I think that's important, especially when you're dealing with circles, right? Because mm -hmm. there's we have a lack of spatial comprehension from a differential mm -hmm. perspective of circles, right? So mm -hmm. if you're ever trying to show differential, it's easier to understand with a bar because mm -hmm. we're not factoring in pi, right, into our mm -hmm. into our uh, right. equations. <laughs> Yeah, so. and you can tell here, Joe. So look at this seventy k. Let's see. Yeah, close, Pretty right? Close, yeah. Yeah, they matched it. I was wondering, like, why did they jump twenty k each one? That seems like an odd choice, but mm -hmm. it probably fits the data really well. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So it probably fits the data, and yeah, I agree with you. It's pretty cool. Um, I'm gonna show you something that I found it's super cool, Joe. I think you're gonna love it. I never thought that you could use the nutrition <laughs> pack. Yeah, you're gonna like this. And actually update, actually update. So let me give you an example. So if I select uh, 12, I mean, let's say, yeah, uh, let's say 20. Well, 12 is Oh better. yeah, I was going go for the large one. <laughs> oh, oh, this happens all the time, hold on. So let me, and let me tell you what I don't like about the, the only thing that I think they should improve. So it was, uh, so look at here, you see a change is actually useless as a table. So, and then you can select the specific one. I don't know if they all work to be honest, because I try, yeah. So you change, so you can use this. This is pretty cool yeah. as your uh, nutrition factor. So you use that something that the user already understands or knows you're using it. So, and then you can select your milk and everything else. The only thing when I was looking at this, Joe, that I was not a little bit, not sure why, was this green all over it. I mean, this mm -hmm. green color was, eh, I wasn't sure. But other than that, it's, it's pretty cool. It's really cool visualization. Uh, makes sense. 
this is hard. It should just to be read. brown for coffee. Yeah, exactly. I thought that it would be the brown, right? And, that, yeah. and then this works, you know, because it's only three colors in here, so it kind of mm -hmm. works. But it's awesome because it gives you the calories. The this is really cool use of of this um this charts here. Mm -hmm. I mean, this way you can box see and whisker. how lighter, yeah, the box and whisker. So no bad, no bad. I mean, I, I really this got my attention a lot. I was like, man, does that actually works? So when I look at it, I started playing with it, and I was like, this is awesome. Yeah, yes. I mean, you, you're relating it to something people mm -hmm. have seen all the time and know, and it's not a mm -hmm. scary just table of data or mm -hmm. a weird visualization. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, it's relatable. Um, yeah. yeah, the greens are, they're actually, I don't think I like them because they're mm -hmm. so close in like exactly. their shades. I couldn't, I, I love how they use the colors in the titles. It's a really good clue into things. Mm -hmm. But I I can't really tell that much of a difference when they went to the macronutrients at the bottom mm -hmm. of yeah. carbohydrates. The carbs are the deepest mm -hmm. green. Mm -hmm. uh, you just got to kind of read that closely. I don't, with only three, it would be fine to use three separate colors, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Maybe that are not red, yellow, yeah. and green, but, um, mm -hmm. but something that's very clearly different. Mm hmm. Well, and they're not even factoring in uh, colorblind this year. Yeah, that's what yes, I correct, correct. Yeah, that's I also mean, important, right? That um, that you you make that difference. Mm -hmm. But um, other than that, I thought it was really cool. And in yeah. this one, I was dragged by this here. This. Oh was my gosh, cool. I love the jitter plots. Yeah, the jitter plots. So look how. Uh, sorry for that. It's coming. It's coming. So the cool thing about this is that if after you start studying this, you were like, oh, I'm never going to go to Starbucks again. It's too, it's too, too much calorie, too much <laughs> and too much fat. And sorry, please don't do this. So yeah, you can select yours uh, from here. I mean, it's a lot of good, great information actually. And, and your size, everything is here. So, and, and yeah, and this is awesome. The way that they created this, I mean, it's pretty cool. What, what do you think, Joe? And again, the green. I'm wondering what's the thing with the green. The but, green with this one is Starbucks, right? I guess. Yeah, it makes more sense. It's their brand mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I like this because I don't know if you've uh, – Starbucks used to. I'm still a shooter. They have a digital version, but used to be able to go in and get that big brochure mm -hmm. of all of their things and, like, mm -hmm. look at the nutrition facts. And I just got mm -hmm. bored one day and was looking at it. Mm -hmm. It's overwhelming. So this yeah. kind of packages it up so you can find what you might like. Um, the jitters are interesting. So is each yes. shot a different drink that happens to be, so you see the outliers. Yeah. Here, look, look at this calories. Please don't drink this one. Everyone <laughs> don't order that so anymore. Good. And it's without, without whip. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't even have a whip. There's no room for it. You just, and this is uh, Frappuccino. Oh, my goodness. I love that. I like those. Oh, I'm in trouble now. Wow. Joe, I never thought about that because, like, you always think, oh, yeah, they they add that extra lid on top for the whip, right? But it actually goes down in the cup a little bit more, right? So if you don't get the whip, they're actually filling it with more of the other stuff, which is probably more <laughs> That's one of those Starbucks, more rich. Snacks, right? Like get yeah. your whip on the side and don't don't get it with ice, just get a cup of ice yeah. later because you'll have yeah. two cups. I, I have a dog, so I know that whole uh, pup cup setup, yes. right? And then you just like do it like a little affogata shot right yeah. on top. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure that Steve Wexler will love this part. He loves Jeter, so Steve, yeah. You're watching later, or everybody can contact Steve. So Here here's is, an interesting uh, question, yeah. mm -hmm. which would be kind of cool to see on this too. How mm. many combinations does Starbucks have for their drinks? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a factorial or something, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, is that why everybody loves it? Because there's something for everyone? Yeah. So That's... look at this part here. What can I drink based on my di dietary preferences? Hmm. So there's more. This is great. So yeah, calories. I'm usually going after carbs. And that's been the latest thing. Like, can I cut my sugars? Um, so I will get whipped because whipped cream doesn't have many carbs in it. It's fairly low in calories as well. So some of those heavier drinks uh, might actually be good. 
Yeah. So look, it's and like caffeine content, and caffeine. Yeah. So let's see. So venti brew coffee. coffee. That's the one that you need. And no need too much. A lot of caffeine, low low sugar. <laughs> Eighty-seven thousand. Is that like that's like four cups of coffee in one, right? That's what the venti is. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So, I remember when I was in high school, I used to get those because that was the the cool thing to do. And now I'm like, I, I know I don't know if everybody knows this. So when you go from a, it's from a grande to uh, venti, right? So that just the small to a medium, right? As soon as you do that, they actually increase the espresso. So that's where you end up with two shots. Mm. That's always what I use mentally. I'm like, how much caffeine do I want right now? Do I just want one shot or do I want the two? Uh, and then I kind of use that as my precursor to deciding how big of a drink to get. Right. Yeah. And I, they kind of got that here too. So mm -hmm. uh, depending on what my nutrient yeah. or whatever of choice, which one should I go for? Exactly. Uh, Here is the different milk choices. So if you want milk choices and then the size, then you will know the calories, the fat, the proteins, etc. So this, this is gives cool. you really great information. And then you can select, I selected, for example, latte here. For, hmm. You can select whatever you want. And if I want to drink a latte and depends on the, for example, soy milk, and that will be the lowest calories and short. So that will give you that information. It's really cool. Really interesting information. On that jitter stuff, I wasn't sure. If you hover over just one, like the one that has huge calories, is it low in caffeine or something? Like, does it highlight the dot across the rest of them? Or do you have to? Uh, yeah, so that outlier one? there up at the top, you mean? OK. Yeah, if you click on that one, does it go across the board? Does it oh, yeah. Yep. It shows yeah. you where it's at. It's kind of yeah, man. Too, but... and, and the average, Joe, like 5'10", 30, 30, 15, 19. So. Oh, it highlights it for that. Okay, so the red line's calling out exactly where it's at in all mm -hmm. those Very dots. Good. That's that's cool. It is cool, yeah. Um, then this one was interesting. And um, I'm not sure, Andrew, you're going to do this one because you like this one, I think, right? Yeah, this one was my favorite one. Yeah, we can okay, talk well, about I'll, this one. I'll, I'm going to jump to another one. So this one, real quick, I'm going to go show you this one real quick. I thought that this was cool, that I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure Joe will like that. So, Joe, you think like when much. you have a coffee, one of those cool coffees that people make those things on top of the coffee, right? <laughs> right. So look at this. And I think that you can select the topic. That was cool. Oh, this always happens. Hold on a second. So you can select the topic. So from you see from production to consumption to exports, so you can select that. Let me see if it works now. So I can select the other one. I'm not sure like if it adds works. In. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it works. And exports. Let's see. So you see, Brazil is the largest export. Look at that, wow. all the way. And imports. Let's see, it was the imports. Oh. Yeah, and this is by pounds, right? Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. not about dollars here. Like, is it the best coffee? It's just mm -hmm. what's the most um, distributed coffee? Correct. So I found mm -hmm. that this was pretty cool and clear and easy to, you know, for somebody to to like to want to look at it. And there's more information, great information. Look at the some of the icons. Yeah, uh, the colors are really good. good. They like matched it to mm -hmm. to the imagery they have. It's very mm -hmm. subtle and like soft colors. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then you can select the a year. And then see, so yeah. So you can select a year and see what happened between different uh, decades, right? Mm -hmm. So and I like the color, right? This is what I thought that the other could have done. I mean select yeah. these colors instead of those greens. Um but yeah. And look look at that. That's for Andrew to go. take uh, to every every lend the luggage <laughs> the other thing here. <laughs> What do you think about this one, Andrew? What do you think? I like this one. I mean, I like the fact that it's taking into consideration uh, the time periods, right? Because mm -hmm. as we look at the growth of coffee here, even in the U.S., right? Mm -hmm. um, I think that really started around the early 2000s, right? And we saw this huge mm -hmm. explosion, especially as you look at, Joe, like you're talking about the highlight of Green Mountain, 
right? Yeah. So when that became big, right, and now we've gotten to this, hey, everything's customized. We're talking about all these different types of coffees and things that we love. I feel like that's where when you look at that curve and who's a top importer, it's Europe. Like they've been doing coffee for mm -hmm. hundreds of years, right? <laughs> so when we kind of talk about this, I remember one of the visas yeah. that I looked at talked about instant coffee has been around for over a hundred years. Mm. And it's like, mm -hmm. wow, that's crazy. Like um, to think of that and the progressions that we've made, it's, it's like, okay, well now we need to start understanding what what kind of contributes to that right is it the entire process and that's some of what we were discussing yesterday during uh transform tuesdays and what this visualization highlights right is what are the changes over time and then what's changing with the coffee process as a whole right so are the beans being grown in different areas are there like um actually my local coffee shop here they actually have bean roasting classes so if you grow your own beans at home, they let you come in and roast them there. You can borrow um, the roaster. That's great. You can borrow the roaster, <laughs> and I'm like, man, that's genius. Because how much do you, how much do they really get to use the roaster, right? Mm -hmm. So if you get people excited, then they, at that point, it creates more value, right? Because Joe, if you were like, wow, I I grew my own beans and they weren't very delicious, right? <laughs> yeah. But now I understand all the pain that goes into making these, right? I'm willing to pay for them to come from Michigan because um, these guys with, with, with Just Coffee know what they're doing, right? Yeah. And I'm willing to pay extra money for that. Yeah. One Definitely. of the things, Joe, that I wanted to show you is just pay attention to this here. And I'm going to move it and to see, so you see that what is going to happen. It's very interesting. So you can see that the graph, right, depends on where you're going. Look at that high, incredible spike there in a, consumption. It was like 2015, I think. And look at the exports now. Let's look at the exports. It's a eh, kind of the same, right? Like, well, 2012, 2018, but it's kind of like in the last couple of years, right? And then we go to the imports. That's it, a great question. You inspect the data. Yeah. Like, is there something going on? Is there really that much of a spike? Because I imagine mm -hmm. it's not like there was a huge boom in people being born or reaching like <laughs> whatever coffee drinking age or something. Yeah, like yeah. That I don't know what that. That's that weird. was the the bogo offers for Starbucks that they were doing. <laughs> <laughs> and they never when you drink one again. in the morning, and then you get a free yeah. one in the afternoon. Yeah. yeah. I'd be curious. I, I don't even know this. Yeah. What's the uh, what's the shelf life for coffee? So did they have a bunch of um, coffee on pallets that were backlogged? So when you look at the production, right, you see a couple peak years, and then it's actually down that year that the exports were really high. So were they like, hey guys, these beans are all about to expire. We got to flood the market. Yeah. So if you that's a good that's a good call because look at this in 2015 it was going it went down look at that production right the production but then the imports let me see the exports first the exports let's see somewhat in the middle mm. still yeah, almost the same but the imports yeah, so I think here's my call out for this one yeah, look at that. um we don't have a scale reference across all these different gra graphs. Mm -hmm. So you don't even know if you're looking at the same mm -hmm. scale, right? We're just mm -hmm. automatically assuming that because it's in the same spot here. And I think that yeah. that could be yeah, a little That's a really good point. Like that's imports really and point, exports yeah. might be comparable, but consumption is something completely different. Yeah. That's right. Data World Bank, Coffee Data, USDA, Government. So population um, data, Data World Bank, and Coffee Data, USDA, Government. Mm. I know, and I'm sure Andrew's seen this too, government data can be, it can change if they're tracking it every mm. year and they just decide oh, we have a new <laughs> way we're tracking this stuff. And you're like, where's mm. this peak coming from? Where's the spike? Oh, we changed the way we measure this thing now, and we're going to include this whole population that we never did before. Yeah. Exactly. So I always, that's yeah. like, yeah, I like to see, I like that they put the source but then it also yeah. is like that could explain why there's a weird spike. They just there is something recorded strange. it incorrectly, perhaps. That's true. There's yeah, something so you, there. So you guys ready to take a look yeah. at a show me, show me what you got. Show me what you got. But those are a couple I okay. picked for Joe, specifically for you, because I know you like those those ones. Yeah. Okay. So um I actually found um the one that we were 
what I was kind of hinting at, and this one's actually inter interactive. So this is the the color palette, mm -hmm. right? And you can just look up the uh, flavor wheel, right, for coffee. Mm. And it literally breaks this down. So like the one that I was talking about um, that I drink with the pinon coffee is more in this range. So it's got like a, a brown sugar kind of molasses honey taste mm -hmm. to it, right? Mm -hmm. Which I like. And I think that's why it pairs so well with the oat milk. Because mm -hmm. what do you put in oatmeal, right? You're mm -hmm. always thinking, oh yeah, brown sugar maple syrup kind of deal, right? Yeah. So the flavor profile is good, but you can see everything from like cereal, right? Um, you've got papery or musty, <laughs> and then you've even got like uh, whiskey, right? Whiskey, so yeah. um, just seeing this is, was really interesting and understanding, oh, wow, like this also kind of helps you understand what your mood is and maybe from a seasonal perspective, this is what I'm kind of looking for in my coffee, right? So exactly. I may be hanging out by the fire and I want more of that brown burnt kind of roast so it it smells like or tastes like that s'mores or something mm -hmm. right that i'm working with or um, maybe it's that mid-afternoon kind of coffee right and it's got more of this uh fruity essence to it or um, mm -hmm. it's in the middle of the summer and i'm hanging out by the pool and i want something a little lighter what what kinds of things should i be looking for in that flavor profile and what's cool about this is let's say i were looking for something with like a, a coconut right mm. you can literally look and understand, okay, how would they infuse that? And then it literally tells you, hey, one drop of coconut extract, right? Under, um, in a medium sniffer, right? So I don't protest to know all the terms with coffee development here, but mm. it was just really un interesting to see how they kind of break this down. And then literally you can see, okay, what what is the reference here, right? Whenever you're trying to understand, um, what is it that all this means, right? So if you were trying to understand how aggressive is that flavor, um, you can kind of see that here. And then um, when we look at something like brown sugar, right? Mm -hmm. So you can literally see, oh, okay, what, what is their frame of reference here? And what are they using um, to kind of understand yeah. what that is? So, so. Th that's the interactivity on it, right? I feel like I've seen this visualization before. Mm -hmm. It has a name, but it's never really used the right way. And it's just like, oh, this is a tree map like thing and you can click yeah. on and explore. And yeah. People get lost immediately. Yeah. So it's, the interactivity is like click to learn about what that thing is, right? Exactly. Yeah, it's exploratory. And maybe that's why we love these so much is because it's that moment where I have a six month old now, right? Mm -hmm. So there's that uh, moment that you see them and they, they've just got that curious look on their face and they're like, let me, let me touch that. I want to understand what this does. Exactly. And I think that from a um, self-service analytics perspective, right? That's all what we're gearing ourselves towards is I want to encourage people to play with the data, right? Yeah. How can I go about doing that? And I think we need to recognize what our initial agenda is for the visual because mm -hmm. there are things within our businesses, right, that matter relative to this, where we want people to explore versus mm -hmm. calling out something that's intended to be inf informational. And exactly. I think that kind of ties into my next one, which um, mm -hmm. Emil kind of called great. out, right? Mm -hmm. And this is more informational where it's got some, some facts in regards to exports, imports, right? And then you can even see hey, what does that look like for uh, countries producing, right? So it's holding pretty solid at 82. <laughs> so in my mind is is like, oh man, are we kind of limited on the land that we have for coffee production? Um, because like, I'll give you an example here in Florida, we actually don't mm -hmm. have the altitude. It needs like a thousand uh, feet off the ground um, or off the water to kind of do that in terms of elevation. So it's not that you can't produce coffee here, but is it really going to be the best coffee, right? Yeah. And then so we get to those like farms that are built into skyscrapers and those yeah. type of things, and maybe they can exploit that. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Maybe that's the catch, right? Is like yeah. we haven't just um, explored from an agronomy perspective, right? Yeah. Using those different altitudes. And that's something that's simple that we can do get into and then 
you'll get me all excited about talking about aquaponics and hydroponics yeah, and stuff. But it's a whole other show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think talking about that, like this is interesting. So our favorite beans are actually the Arabica beans, Arabica beans. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting, if you look at the Robusta one, right? It's, oh, they can grow at lower altitudes, right? Mm. And they produce more fruit quickly and have a higher yield per tree. Mm. So what's actually interesting is yeah. it's like, man, these just aren't as good. So the, if I were in agriculture, right, I'd be trying to figure out how can I make this bean better or can I do a hybrid? Because if I can at least get a little bit more flavor out of it, right, mm -hmm. and do it in an area um, that grows faster and has more fruit, right, mm -hmm. then instantly I could start being more profitable. And mm -hmm. I think that's where you can kind of really see weird this. ones too, where it's the yeah. animal that eats it and uh, yeah. it lets it go. And I forget what it's called, but I remember. Kobe Luwak. So that's all yeah. the way down here at the bottom, the fun facts. Yeah. I, yeah. I thought that this could be on the, I don't know. I thought when I saw this, I was like, why are they going to put that on the top too? Like I thought that maybe, I understand yeah. they want to do some fun facts, but it's, tell tell everybody about the fun facts. That's, that's what it was great. Yeah. So I'll zoom in here so everybody can see them a little that's better. Good. So um, Kopi Luak is, I mean, one, it's $600 a pound, but essentially there's these cats in this region that a, a civet, right. That eats the coffee beans Mm -hmm. And then they come back out the other side. And because of the enzymes in the uh, cat's stomach, it actually makes the coffee smoother. <laughs> so then that's really like the selling point, right? Um, I'm pretty sure the cat's bowels are probably really consistent. So mm -hmm. they're all good with having their one cup a day, right? Um, and I, I look at this and like I even did some mental math on these other ones. So one, you got 250 years for uh, instant coffee, right? So... Wow. I'm like, wow, that, that probably was around the time of um, the Boston Tea Party, right? It's almost around the same time. Maybe they were like, oh, we got to find something as quick as tea, right? Because we're tired of doing cold brew. <laughs> and then when I look at this, it's also a thousand bucks a year that we spend on coffee. And I had to do wow. like some quick mental math. And I'm like, yeah, that's actually not unrealistic, right? Yeah. Especially now that I've been going and the cups of coffee sometimes they're like six bucks yeah six bucks for a cup of coffee so yeah that's, that's really not getting too crazy yeah and and luckily now we, most of the other people are at home and like joe he can make it at home right he can get his coffee at home right so that's that that became it was a money situation like yeah. i just started tracking at one point with like yeah. mint or what was ever on my my phone for tracking my spending and i'm like whoo there's a lot of yeah. money that's going to the coffee shops. Exactly. I better learn how to make my own. <laughs> and then I got the machine that I'll carry around with me every once in a while. Exactly. This part was, I think, cool because it overlaid, hey, who's importing coffee versus producing it, right? So yeah. are those even in alignment, especially now that we're talking about working from home and we're becoming a global mm -hmm. economy, right? So mm -hmm. when I look at this, mm -hmm. Joe, with us working from home, right, maybe you're such a coffee savant you're like maybe i should be moving to brazil so i could be closer and hang out with these coffee trees right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um i could i could go do like a little coffee tour on the weekends or in the evening or i guess in the mornings right you'd have to alter your work hours a little bit and right. then that's was kind of my question are so these two in alignment union. yeah yeah the European union. i really like that yeah you can see who's the highest exporter yeah. and then here the european union on the other side the importer so Wow. Yeah. So this one was actually really interesting. Mm. So Japan, although they make coffee, right, um, they actually don't export any. Hmm. So I was like, that's really interesting. Like what I, then I'm sitting here trying to figure out what's what's the deal there? What's the story mm -hmm. like behind Japanese coffee? Right. Mm -hmm. And I mean, oh, yeah. I think. But yeah, I'm like, oh, man, like they do so many things so well, right? Like with yeah. uh, whiskeys and all these things from a mm -hmm. refinement perspective. I'm like, maybe that's who needs to work on the Robusta beans, right? That's like, going to be that... the next big one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you figured it out. Exactly. So, yeah. And then I love the use of um, trees. That's I mean, in cool. part because I love plants. Mm -hmm. So you've kind of got some of that visualization here um, going yeah. on. This one, this one is awesome. Yeah, that one is yeah. awesome. And then this is overall really good. I mean, you know what I like too? 
they have that those questions you know they are using yes. questions instead of simple um uh titles right and then you and you know what you're looking at or what you're supposed to be looking at and what they're trying to uh, show here in this visualization so yeah really that's cool. really it just outlines a journey right exactly um, a journey towards you hey if you spend a thousand bucks joe if you're trying to cut your coffee consumption but <laughs> you want to do the same spend every year you could you could blow it all on one pound of kopi luak true. right <laughs> <laughs> like you could have a worse habit I, I can't tell whether they're trying to say hey you could be spending six thousand dollars a year on coffee right or if you really want to cut your habit right you're going to have that one cup that's so amazing that you're not going to want to mm -hmm. try any other cups that's what i'm afraid it, it could be so life-changing what if you just get hooked and that's your thing now well, yeah. it's really <laughs> once a month. I have a cup of coffee. Tough right? to import. Yeah, <laughs> I have to have it. Now, I don't want to be that addicted to it, but it's pretty close. <laughs> I think we just need to figure out where these cats are for sale. That's that's yeah. more what I'm focused on. <laughs> cool. where, what 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 is in that uh, icon and the eye, uh, the information icon right there on the right? What, what is mm. probably the, the source, right? Where it's from? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's clever. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, coffee beans from. How has it only been starred 13 times? This seems like. Yeah, here, let me let me give it another one right now. Oh, yep, yeah, I'll give it another one. <laughs> oh, man, yeah. it's going all in. All right, we'll leave that alone. This is, no, this is a great one. I mean, you can see the KPIs on top. For example, Joe, like, you know, all the way to the top, you have your KPIs, and it will take you down. You know, great title. Tells you how what the year, January 20 to August 2020. Uh, two decades apparently it says two decade performance yeah exactly so 20 a lot of coffee went into making this one i hope exactly i'm pretty sure it's very nice i really like this one uh andrew so awesome. pretty much we're at the end of the show but we're going to ruffle we're going to do the, the 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 giveaway of coffee i wanted to ask mark marcus can you tell me a brand from brazil that you do like marcus is in the chat he's from brazil we have a couple of friends here from brazil they the highest and the largest exporter of coffee in the world. Pretty impre impressive. Um, so tell us uh, some of the, those brands there. So we're doing here the, the drawing. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see if we can uh, click That's on right. that. That's right. And this is a big one. It could fit probably like five Cortados. Um, cool. Maybe one, one Vente could fit in here. Almost Vente. No way. And it might fit. Exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's go. Let's see. Let's see. Andrew, if you win, you're going to have to redo it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my oh. God. <laughs> That's how it works. This is, man, they're going to. This oh, you is won. Uh, you won. <laughs> We're gonna right. get, yeah, we got to do another person. I've got my smoothie here. I, this is the afternoon stuff. Make sure to wash it down. No way. Again. <laughs> you, need to, you need to play the lottery. I only did I only did one entry telling everybody to vote on it too. Come on, that's gonna be Yeah, Marcus. Marcus. There we okay. go. All right, Marcus. You got a mug heading your way. You got a mug. And that was yeah, fun. Yeah. <laughs> um you did, um you, do we have anything else? I mean, I think we can do one more, right? And maybe we can ruffle something else. Um Aaron, yeah. I don't know if you want to do one more time. One more time. One more time. I have some some things here that we can. Hopefully, Andrew doesn't come up again. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is All bad. right. Lottery this ticket. Lottery Maybe ticket. I'm going to buy one this evening. Maybe it's, it's, it's the letter A at the beginning or something. Yeah, Cody. There you go, Cody. <laughs> Cody. Thank All you. Right. Oh, I just wanted to say thank you to Joe again. Joe, it's great to, to have you here. Uh, Joe, tell us a little bit about the show that you guys have, and what at the time that you have the shows. Anybody wants to, you know? Participate. Yeah, we're not as consistent as you guys, so um, I always have it on my my Wednesday to come see three at three. But uh -huh. our, our team does what we call Appy Hour, and mm -hmm. we started off with we would have these sessions behind the scenes of like let's fix each other's charts and mm -hmm. dashboards. Great. We pull customers into it, and then we said. That's fun. Maybe we can just record this. Exactly. Put it out there. So we started doing that and then discovered like people interacting with the audience. So happy exactly. hours on Thursdays. And um, 
they're sometimes using our software. We're sometimes having chats about data literacy. Mm -hmm. um, we we tried one and I was like, it's really close to three at three. Like pick your favorite chart and we'll talk about mm -hmm. it. Uh -huh. um, so we tried that once or twice, but we haven't figured out your guys' style the right way. So we'll, we'll just keep <laughs> coming here and participating yeah. and sending you things. Awesome. But we have fun with it. And it's a good way to just not have a webinar. And there's little preparation. That's what I really like. Yeah, exactly. and we just have real conversations about data, exactly. Um, and visualizations, best practices. So there's a lot of good overlap, I think, uh, with you guys too. So really appreciate it. We're getting ideas back and forth. I think. Of course, yeah. Anytime. Well, and Joe, what I think the best part is about the conversation is honestly all the comments and stuff on the side, right? So yeah. as people have mm -hmm. questions and really that participation, it's mm -hmm. just a whole nother level of learning, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's what's really going to drive everybody forward. I didn't even, I don't even think I showed this, right? It's it's that oh, extra yeah. little touch, right? My, <laughs> my little coffee spoon. So yeah. literally this is made with coffee wood. And as crazy as it sounds, right? It's, it's part of that ritual that you're doing every week where, hey, I've got my mug and my cup of coffee. Like this is cool. And this is one of my favorite ones actually from, from Tableau from ages ago. But mm -hmm. literally, I'll sit there and like just the, the stirring of that, right? And knowing that everything's all connected is huge. Wow. And that's what I look at with our community, right? Like, hey, this is a visualization community. And we're really fostering that together and creating more people who are uh, data literate. Yeah, and exactly. Literate. Yeah. And, and, and the cool thing, Joe, is like, you know, I think from the show, and we we're here in the 36th episode, it's like how many great people like you we have met through all the show, oh, like man. how many great individuals? Yeah, we have. You no, know, I feel like I have friends everywhere. You know, like we have yeah. friends everywhere, and we can chat and we can share and we can iterate and we can learn from each other. I mean, that's that's the cool thing, you know, and and that's what so, you know. We love it every week. Joe, yeah. to announce our new business idea, we're going to start a uh, visualization coffee exchange program. <laughs> and <laughs> all right, I'll be a founding member. Yeah. That sounds great. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. All right, everyone, we got to wrap up here. But um, Aaron threw in the chat. Um, if you're interested in signing up for future sessions yes. to join us, um, mm -hmm. please feel free to use the Sign Up Genius link. Um, exactly. And again, thank you to our sponsors who are uh, Data Meaning, who's el yeah. helping with amazing swag. And we get to do this every day and we love it. So if you yeah. ever have um, any questions where you need help with your uh, dashboards on any visualization problems, or need mm -hmm. feedback, um, we're here to help let and us, you can us DM know. us directly. Yeah. All right. Happy yes, Wednesday, James. everybody. Thank yeah. you. James, yes, we're gonna be on on live on the Tableau conference. We're we're actually invited, actually. It's actually yeah, an James. incredible thing. Yeah. We're gonna talk about that tomorrow uh, soon. Very soon. Yes. Yeah. He, James Thank already you. gave everybody a sneak preview. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thank, Thank you, you, Joe. Thank, Thank you guys. Everybody. That was fun. Bye. -bye.